land of the Buddha has many ancient Buddhist relics and monuments in various states with great following and ideals of Buddhism. Telangana as a geographical and political entity is born on June 2nd, 2014 as the 29th and the youngest state of India. However, as an economic, social, cultural and historical entity, it has a glorious history of more than 2000 years. A part of present Telangana known as Asaka in Pali, Asmaka in Sanskrit, was a region of ancient India, 700 BC to 300 BC. It was one of the Shodasa Mahajanapadas in the 6th century BC, mentioned in the Buddhist text Anguttara Nikaya. One may be taken by surprise to learn that, more than two millennia ago, Gautama Buddha's teachings had influenced Telangana and that an islet on the river Godavari called Badana Kurti was the first place the peninsula to have been the center of Buddhism. Even on this day, Badana Kurti is a symbol of pride for the Telangana state. It has been proven by historians that Badana Kurti also boasts of being one of the first places where Buddhism had reached without Gautama Buddha himself being present there. Buddha's Suttanipata, a part of the Tripitakas, mentions clearly that where the river Godavari splits into two, and meets again, creating an iot, was a rishi known as Bavari. There is also strong historical evidence to prove that this place mentioned in the Suttanipata is Badana Kurti. It is also mentioned that the islet is between Asaka and Mulaka, which are the present-day Telangana and Maharashtra regions. To trace the origin of Godavari, Triambakam to the entirety of Telangana, Badana Kurti is the only iot which sheds more than enough light to prove that the place mentioned in the Tripitakas is none other than Badana Kurti. Till a few years ago, the only way to reach Badana Kurti, which is the present day Adilabad, was by boats plied by the local fishermen. But now there are two bridges connecting the banks to the iot. Bavari, when he heard of Buddha's teachings, felt he was too old to go by himself and had sent 16 of his disciples to Gautama Buddha. They had shared Bavari's teachings with Gautama Buddha and imbibed the preachings of Buddha, which were recorded in Suttanipata. Out of the 16 disciples, only one disciple, Pingya, had returned to Bavari. Upon Pingya's return, even Bavari had begun following the Buddhist teachings. After Mahaparinirvana of the Buddha, the present-day Bodhan, that was the capital of the erstwhile Potali kingdom's ruler, Asmaka, had also converted to Buddhism. Thereafter, Buddhism not only spread into the Telangana region, but to the rest of southern India. Over hills and forests in the western part of India, Buddhism spread through the country along the Pranahita River and reached Godavari. As per the records of historians, Buddhism further spread rapidly in the era of Satavahanas, along with Kota Lingala and Dhulikatta. Various other places in Telangana had emerged as Buddhist centers. Kota Lingala Among these places, Kota Lingala remains as a cornerstone in Buddhist history right to this age. As per historical evidence, Kota Lingala was the capital city of the Satavahanas during 2nd century BC to 1st century AD. Excavations had unraveled Simuka Satavahana's currency at Kota Lingala. During the excavations carried out between the years 1979 to 1984, this historical city had come to be unearthed. These excavations also revealed remains of wells, sophisticated drainage systems and brick constructions. Roman currency was also found at the site, which is sufficient evidence to show that 
Kota Lingala was a center for trade and commerce. The stupa that was unearthed in the excavations was made of bricks that were unique to the Satavahanas. The inscriptions on the stupa were written in ancient Brahmi script. It has been ascertained that these inscriptions predated Ashoka. It can be inferred through this that Buddhism spread in these parts a long time before Ashoka's reign. It is said that a well-known Tarkika Vetta, Dinna Guru, belonged to Kota Lingala. Apart from being a Tarkika Vetta, he was also a well-regarded art scholar. He is also known to have written Kandamala and to have developed the Buddhist Tarkika science. The adjoining hills known as Munula Gutta has been stated to be Dinna Guru's base of operations. It is found that the Telangana region has many more Buddhist sites waiting to be explored. Dhulikatta, also known as Dhulikota, Mutt Fort, 16 kilometers from Pedapalli district, is located at a distance of 32 kilometers from Karimnagar town. It is an extensive early historic site encompassed by a mud fort with brick-built gateways and other structures including a stupa viharas, granaries, guard rooms, houses, wells and drains. Excavations conducted at the site brought to light a stupa consisting of a dome, drum with ayaka platforms and production apada all around. The drum is decorated with sculptural panels depicting Naga Muchilinda, Bodhi tree, Buddha Padas and Upasakas. Some of the panels are inscribed with the names of the donors in early Brahmi characters of 2nd century BC. The other antiquities recovered are the Satavahana's coins, including a portrait coin of Siva Siri Pulumavi and Roman coins. Terracotta figures, beads, bangles, inscribed ivory seals and a small bronze icon of a mother and child. The sculptural panels on the stupa reveal the artistic traditions of the early Satavahanas representing the first phase of Amravati school of art on one hand and the Sunga art tradition of the Barhut stupa on the other. Kondapur village and mandal is situated in Sangaredi district at a distance of 60 kilometers from Hyderabad on Hyderabad Bidar Highway. It is considered to be one of the 30 walled towns of the Andhras mentioned by Megasthenes, a Greek ambassador who visited India during the 4th century BC. A mud fort enclosed the habitation site. Excavations conducted inside the fort area laid bare remains of brick-built stupas, chaityas, viharas and a few secular buildings including a mint workshop and residential structures. Dates back to the Satavahana period between the 1st century BC to 2nd century AD. Six underground chambers containing coins, coin molds, seals and ceilings, huge quantities of terracotta figurines, beads, bangles, ornaments made of gold and other metals were also unearthed. A gold coin of Roman pontiff Augustus 37 BC to 14 AD, about a dozen silver coins, 50 copper and a good number of lead coins were also recovered from the excavations. The limestone sculptural panels and other antiquities including pottery are on display in the site museum. Kundapur is considered as a great center of learning and Gunadya, the court poet of Satavahana Emperor Hala is believed to have hailed from Kondapur. Panigiri The Buddhist site at Panigiri is located on a hilltop and is about 45 kilometers away from Suryapet district, 110 kilometers from Hyderabad via Bhuvanigiri and 6 kilometers from Tirumalagiri. Excavations conducted at Panigiri brought to light a Mahastupa Apsidal Chaitya Grihas, votive stupas, congregation hall viharas, platforms with staircases at various levels, Brahmi label inscriptions of the Satavahana 
and Ishwaku times, 2nd to 3rd century AD. Punch marked coins and coins issued by the Kshatrapas, Romans, Mahatalavara chiefs, etc. And several limestone sculptural panels depicting the great events of Siddhartha Gautama's life, Jataka tales, and Buddhapada slabs, Buddha and Bodhisattva images were also recovered from the site. Gajula Banda, another Buddhist site locally known as Gajula Banda, situated on the left bank of the river Aleru near Ituru village, is three kilometers away from Panigiri on northwest. State Department of Archaeology conducted excavations during the years 1970-71 and 1978-79. During the excavations, the existence of Stupa Vihara complex and Chaitya are reported here. Unearthed, a monastery comprised of a Mahastupa, Vihara, votive stupas platforms and early historic materials. The Mahastupa 9.60 meters dia is located on the northwestern part of the hillock with Ayaka platforms 1.10 by 1.75 meters on four cardinal directions. Associated with brick structures reported were a broken stone plaque depicted with Srivatsa, Sankha and Stupa. A fine sharp copper hook, stucco pieces of lotus flowers of different shapes and sizes. Decorative potsherds of various designs such as stamped, linear and etched types along with Satavahana coins dates back to 1st and 2nd century AD. Nelakondapalli It is a roadside village on Kambam Kodada Highway. It is an ancient fortified city comprising numerous mounds inside. Excavations at the early historic mounds in the village, locally known as Virataraju Dibba and Bairagula Gutta brought to light a number of limestone images of standing Buddha, a row of brick-built water troughs for the treatment of sculptured panels, viharas, a mahachaitya, rock-cut votive stupas, terracotta figures, besides numerous Vishnukundi coins, 4th to 5th century AD. The presence of uncarved limestone blocks, chips and flakes at Bairagula Gutta obviously suggests that it was a manufacturing center of Buddhist sculptures and panels. Recently, the fishermen of the village brought an icon of standing Buddha as Padmapani in bronze to light from the rivulet nearby, flowing adjacent to the Mahastupa. On stylistic grounds, it is dated to the post-Gupta times 6th century AD. Nagarjuna Kunda is located between the borders of Nalgunda and Guntur districts, boundary of Telangana and Andhra Pradesh states, in a distance of 160 km from Hyderabad and 65 km from Nalgunda. And the areas around the Nagarjuna Sagar include a reservoir formed due to the construction of the dam across the river Krishna. Formation and island was known as Nagarjuna Kunda or Sri Parvata Vijayapuri once served as capital city of the Ishwaku dynasty, which ruled Andhra Desa during the 3rd and 4th centuries AD. Nagarjuna Kunda was named after the famous Acharya Nagarjuna, Buddhist scholar, Mahayana Buddhism and Madhyamika philosopher, who spent his last days in a monastery on the hill called Sri Parvata. The rich archaeological wealth of the valley came to light in 1926 by A.R. Saraswati, Telugu assistant to the archaeological superintendent of epigraphy. Excavation started here as early as 1927 and completed by 1960. Resulted, Brahmanical and many of the Buddhist sects had their monasteries, shrines and stupas built to propagate the Buddha Dhamma. The Telangana Tourism Development Corporation is developing a Buddhist heritage theme park, Sri Parvata Arama, Buddha Vanam, 
at Nagarjuna Sagar with the financial assistance from the central and state governments for the benefit of domestic and foreign tourists, particularly coming from the Southeast Asian countries. The corporation has acquired an extent of 274 acres of land on the left bank of the river Krishna and is divided into eight segments with an elegant entrance plaza. Buddha Charita Vanam, Bodhisattva Park, Dhyana Vanam, Meditation Park, Stupa Park, Acharya Nagarjuna International Center for Higher Buddhist Learning, Krishna Valley Park, Buddhism in Telangana, and a Mahastupa. The Buddha Vanam symbolically represents the Astanga Marga propounded by the Buddha. It will be the first in the country having many thematic segments depicting the major events from the life of Siddhartha Gautama and his previous birth stories, miniature stupas of national and international models. The State Department of Archaeology and Museums has established a Buddhist heritage museum in the ground floor of Mahastupa. There will be good response from foreign countries, especially from Southeast Asian countries. The government of Sri Lanka have come forward and donated the replica of Avukana Buddha statue, 27 feet height, and Dhamma Bell under Indo-Sri Lankan Cultural Exchange Program. The government has also interested to build their Simhala Vihara complex in the premises of Buddha Vanam. The replica of Amravati style of Mahastupa with sculptural embellishments will be the main attraction of the Buddhist theme park. Telangana has been a vibrant social entity by the time of the Buddha. The revolutionary attributes of fighting against discrimination and inequality can also be seen in Telangana. Telangana has created its identity more than 2000 years ago. Hyun Sang, a Buddhist scholar from China, had also visited Telangana on his travels across India, which shows that Telangana had contact with the outside world thousands of years ago. A political revolution must always assimilate the historic and philosophical attributes of the region. To guide the growth of Telangana to be an inspiration to the rest of the country.